how you come across somebody once in a while you, you shouldn't have messed with. That's me. Well, I'm all back down. I am not an African-American. You're an Oreo cookie. White in the inside and black on the outside. I don't have an afro. I have an Amerifro. Talking that idiotic stuff you talk about, I will slap you. Go ahead. Make my day. Black at the ace of spades, but 100 100% 100% American. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. The Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Peterson. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being with me. Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 to noon Eastern Time. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. Bill Lockwood, he's the uh, pastor at Our Park Church of Christ in Texas and a teacher at the Wichita Falls Independent School District. He is the host of American Liberty with Bill Lockwood every Saturday morning, 11.30 a.m. to 12 noon Central Time in Wichita Falls. On News Talk 1290, on uh, your yeah, AM dial there, folks. You can read Bill's articles and on uh, uh, Patriots for the number four, PatriotsForLiberty.com. Bill, I want to talk about the uh, Democratic National Convention. You write in your blog, slated for the Democratic National Convention, August 31st to, through September 1, is an official event to be led by radical Islamic supremacists. Can you explain that to us? You know, the Democratic National Convention or the Democratic Party uh, is reaching out to the most radical anti-American individuals of the Muslim community. Uh, these Islamists uh, who are these two men, uh, Jibril uh, Hugh, I guess is how you say his last name. I think some people say, uh, you call it Hugh or Huff? Well, maybe it's Huff. Maybe it is Huff. It's H-O-U-G-H. Yeah. Maybe it is Huff. Maybe that's how you say it. They and need to Shirai. change their names when they come here and get white <laughs> and get white names. Well, they are difficult to pronounce sometimes, and it gets confusing. <laughs> but yeah. he, as well as another one by the name of Wahaj, uh, will be leading. Uh, they have a kind of a fun fest thing coming up uh, where they have, they have a group prayer, which is a, an Islamic. Uh, they have a cultural fun fest day, and I believe it starts tomorrow, actually. Uh, but to both of them have made the radical, uh, radically anti-American statements and uh, presented anti-American sentiments. Uh, matter of fact, Wahaj, uh, as witnessed uh, by one uh, writer, uh, she said her name is Brian Howe, she says, I saw him with my own eyes in 1995 say, it is his duty and our duty as Muslims to replace the Constitution with the Quran. That's, that's exactly what their goal is. And for that sentiment, which is, of course, completely anti-American and treasonous, uh, he's been invited to lead, which is a part, by the way, and has been advertised by the Democratic National Convention. And he's going to be leading this fun fest of the Islamic uh, group prayer, along with the other man, uh, uh, Jibril How or Hugh, how we say his name. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's connected with Hamas. He's defended Hamas. And um, he says all Islamic movements must oppose or oppose America's policies. Now, how is it that these men can be so radical and should be on an anti-American watch list, and yet uh, they're invited to lead under the aegis of the Democratic National Convention an Islamic fun fest? This That's guy, what I want to Yeah, this guy, Sirad, or Sherrod, is an imam in Brooklyn, New York, a leader of the Muslim Alliance in North America. He is also a member of CARE, co-conspirator in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. He should be in jail or thrown out of the country. Right. Uh, and I'm thinking that they're bringing all these people in just to get Obama reelected, and they don't care about the security of this country. No, they don't. No, they're interested in re-election and taking this country to a socialistic viewpoint. And, and something is, a lot of people miss is that the Islamist movement, which are these radical Muslims, uh, that recognizes, of course, there are some Muslims that do not agree with this particular program, but the radical Muslim movement in America, Jesse, uh, they, ha- they are basically communistic in their style and communistic in their whole uh, approach. 
and they have even linked. Matter of fact, Muslim Brotherhood has linked itself with the Nazi movement in the past, uh, and that's exactly what it is. So it's basically a communistic approach, a takeover, and a removing of the Constitution and replacing it with the Quran. That's the, that's the radical agenda. And yet these people are given a platform with the respectability of the Democratic National Convention behind it. Uh, and it's very, very frightening to me. I also read from your blog that this guy, Jibril, is the leader of a Sunni mosque in Charlotte, North Carolina. And his mosque is owned by the North America Islamic Trust, a front group for Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. Explain to the people who or what Hamas is. What does that mean? Well, Hamas is just a, an, an outreach, or a, I should say, a branch of the Muslim Brotherhood in which uh, they are, um, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood basically uh, founded in 19, uh, I think it was 1928, uh, by Al, uh, Albana, Hassan Albana, yeah. um, a cleric from Egypt. And basically, uh, they say that um, the, whole, the, whole, the whole theory is, uh, is basically that uh, we have to have a Sharia law that we're going to um, practice Sharia law, that we're going to implement it, uh, the re- restoration of the lost caliphate, um, and then we have to die for Islam. That's, that's what the whole thing is, the jihad. So, uh, matter of fact, uh, Obama made the statement, he says that we know, we know how to die a noble and honorable death. And uh, if you do that, then you'll be granted the eternal life in the next. And he says, prepare for jihad and be lovers of death. Now, that's his, uh, that's his whole motto that the Muslim Brotherhood was founded upon. And the Hamas is, a, is an outreach or is a branch of that, and it's a terroristic organization and has been so classified by our government. So these people all have links. They're all tied together. And yet they are now going to be front and center at the Democratic National Convention. This is difficult a- to believe. It's absolutely amazing. And I'm looking at the number of Democrats, you know, Americans who are Democrats, who are participating in this convention, and they are allowing this to happen without even a word of complaint about it. Have they been deceived into believing that these people are friends of America, these Muslims, these well, radical I Muslims? So. I believe so. I believe they've been, a lot of them have, people have been deceived, you know, but, you know, as the Bible shows us, many people are deceived because they want to be deceived. Uh, they want they want to be blinded. And, uh, you know, when, the, when they want Satan's lies, then they're easily lied to. Uh, just for an example, Keith Ellison, you know, is, a, is one of our um, congressmen uh, from Minnesota. And he, of course, has had a longstanding relationship with Hamas, uh, well, the Hamas link to the uh, Council of American and Islamic Relations, and he's also had links with the Muslim Brotherhood. Yet he will deny, he denies that there's any link to it, yet they helped sponsor his, uh, he had a, a mission or a tour then when he went to Mecca. They helped sponsor that, and uh, yet he denies that he has anything to do with these people. <laughs> But it's just sad, but that's Keith Ellison. Well, um, but, the, the, the Muslims are taught to lie. They say that in the Quran that you can lie to the infidels. You can deceive them by any means necessary. So by Keith Ellison lying, it, I mean, he's taught, so he doesn't think that he's doing anything wrong because the Quran said that you can lie. Right. Your most recent blog post is called Replacing the Constitution with the Koran. Can you give us a, a couple of examples of that happening? There have been um, specific cases in different portions, uh, in different places in the country, wherein, for example, um, uh, Sharia law is actually utilized by judges um, in order to adjudicate cases, such as in New Jersey and New York, um, and they're there are plenty of them, examples, and you can just uh, find them on the web, But uh, where Sharia law is actually utilized. Uh, but here's another aspect of it, and I, I didn't mention this earlier, but one of the frightening things about um, our whole stance as far as the American people is that the concept is that if the Muslims are angry or Muslims are upset with uh, anything that's going on that we, we say or something, then the, the, uh, the unstated premise is that it's our fault that uh, for example, the American soldiers in Afghanistan, you know, there have been eight, eight soldiers attacked and killed within the last uh, several weeks, just within the last three weeks. And yet the whole stance of the United States Army is that it's our fault. Uh, we should avoid arrogance. We should ab- avoid expressing the belief that our culture is superior to theirs. Always show respect for Islam, the Quran, the mosque. Afghan women. Now, of course, those Afghan men don't have to respect the women, but well, you know we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but you know what? You can't you can't express your disfavor for honor killing, for suicide bombing, 
you can't express your disfavor for execution of adulteresses. And uh, those men that have been burned, that, uh, you know, unintentionally burned the Quran. Remember those soldiers that were passing notes back and forth? Yeah. Of the prisoners? Yeah. Well, those, they, those Qurans were burned in unintentionally, and yet they're facing court-martial. We are capitulating at every cultural fa- station to the concept of Sharia law. And uh, that's why states like Oklahoma are trying to put into their, in the Constitution, we will have no Sharia law in Oklahoma. State of Texas, trying, people trying to do that here in other states. The reason they're doing that is because Sharia law is creeping into these different areas. Michigan is a perfect illustration. So uh, these are some areas that we really uh, need to be concerned about in America if we want to enjoy our freedoms any longer. So what is the um, key to turning all this around? Because it seems to be out of control already, and the mindset of the American people don't seem to really understand the depths of what's going on. How can we turn it around, Bill? I believe that we have to come back to God. Once a culture, just like an individual, empties himself or itself of God, or the concept of a God-oriented worldview, then it's a vacuum and anything fills it. And that usually is communism, any kind of satanic lie. I believe the Quran is a false book. It is a, it is a lie that uh, was put forward by Muhammad, and those people are absolutely uh, blinded by it. And, but anything takes that vacuum, anything fills it, unless we actually turn back to God. And unless we turn back in our hearts to God, I don't believe there's any hope for America. 